Hello everybody, I'm Betsy Romero from Hattari Labs and today we will explain you how to set up a simple Karst conduit system in a previously existing Modflow model and we will do the analysis of the results. In this tutorial we will work using a base flow model and this model has a drainage system as we can see here. It also has a a constant head that represents uh, the boundaries and also here we have a constant head condition that represents a spring that it is located at the outlet of the karstic system. To model this uh, karstic system we need to use the CFP package and we will activate it by going here in model and, and then we will select Modflow CFP. Now we have to go to model again, but now to Modflow packages and programs. And here we have to make sure that CFP is selected. And also that uh, the mode called conduit pipes is active. The rest of these uh, parameters can be left as default and now we click OK. Um, now to represent the cars conduits of this area, we will import a shape file. First I'm going to uh, hide these objects and I will show only the uh, active area. And we go to File, Import, Shape File. And here in the Shape File folder, you will find uh, this conduit file. So we will open it. We will select Set Values of Intersected Cells. And we will import the shapes as a single multi part object. And and here you can see this will be our karst conduits. Now we double click. And first of all, we will assign uh, the set formulas. It will be one and it will represent an elevation of 350. In the following tab in Modflow features, we will check here in CFP and we will insert the hydraulic parameters of the conduits. For this example, the diameter considered will be 2.5 meters, the tortuosity will be 1, the roughness height will be 0.1 and in order to make the model more stable, the lower critical Reynolds number will be 500 and the higher one will be 5,000. The conduit uh, wall conductance will be uh, 10 to the power of minus 5. And the pipe elevation will be 350. Now we click OK. And the next step is to select the point that defines the spring. We can find it here because this is uh, defined as a constant, he constant head. Wait, sorry. We zoom in here and we select this point. And then we have to go here where it says CFP fixed heads. In your case, this part should be uh, will be unselected, but you will select it as it sh it is shown here. And we will indicate a fixed head of 362 meters, and this is to indicate that uh, this uh, point is connected to the karstic system. Now we click OK. And after these two steps, 
uh, we are ready to run the model. So we save and we run. Okay, now that we have the model ready, we will check the list file. And in this file, you will find useful information about the conduits. If we go here, for example, for example, in this part, um, you will see that the model assigns node numbers to each of the cells where the conduit is going through. So in order to know which is the node number uh, of the spring, where the spring is located, we just need to check its corresponding column and row or the X and Y coordinates. In this case, we can go to our model and if we zoom here, we can see that the spring is located in the uh, column 39 under row number 4. So if we go back here, we can see that the column 39 under row 4 is located, it's been assigned to the node 1. So now we know that the spring is the node 1. Here you can also find information, well, in this case, this is for the drain system. In this part, uh, now we are here in the results of the flow calculation. Here we can see that the node 1 that, as we said, is the spring, is indicated as a fixed head, which is uh, what we did in Model Muse. In this section of the, of the balance, each of the nodes can be evaluated to see if the flow is from the porous media to the conduits or vice versa, and also the amount of the flow that is being exchanged. When the node head is higher than the porous media head, the flow goes from the conduit into the matrix and is defined with a positive value of the exchange flow. And in this case, well, the negative values will represent uh, the opposite. And it's, it is also seen here that we have not uh, assigned any direct recharge in any of the nodes, but there is the possibility of uh, adding this as a percentage of the total recharge that can be uh, uh, infiltrated, infiltrating at a certain node. Here in this next section, uh, it indicates the flow that is going through each of the tubes. Now, uh, no by, not by nodes, but uh, related to tubes, but in the end, these are defined by uh, two nodes. So this balance, the one that you see here, is connected to the previous node analysis. And also here you can find the Reynolds number that has been calculated for each of these tubes. And based on this, you can see that the flow going through the tubes is, uh, in this case, turbulent. And this uh, following section presents the water budget, but this water budget is only for the 
pipe system. Uh, here you have the node water budget and here you can see the fixed head and uh, this value here it's a uh, flow in cubic meters per second and it's equal to 0 0.045 cubic meters per second and this value corresponds to the flow that is going out through the spring which is well the flow of the spring also uh, this water budget includes the previously indicated values of the matrix ex ex exchange, which are here. And also uh, it includes the inflow, these nodes, and this will give us the um, total outflow obtained for each one of these nodes. Finally, at the end, we have the total volumetric budget of the model. And here, besides the boundary conditions, uh, like the constant head of the trains, the pipe's contribution to the model is considered in the balance. It is observed that, uh, in comparison to the other boundary conditions, the effect of the pipes is uh, really small. And also, uh, like in any other um, mod flow model, we can import our results, which is the HD uh, file. We can open it and we can display as a color grid. And here we can see the head distribution. So uh, this is all uh, for this tutorial. I hope that it has been useful for you and don't forget to always check the Hatari Labs website because there's always new posts every week. So until next time, bye bye.